Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the RTX 4060 Ti. Now today is MSRP day so I have the Founders Edition card here for us to take a look at but I also have the Gigabyte Eagle, both the same price, both very different in reality to like build quality and stuff but we'll see how the performance goes. Yes, I have got specs but we have also tested this on a brand new test rig. So every single thing in the graphs today has been retested within the last couple of weeks on a 13900K, finally. But anyway, thank you to SCD Keys for this. Do you have the annoying activate Windows icon on your desktop or you're planning on building a new rig and need a fresh key? Then head over to SCD Key where you can buy Windows 10 and Windows 11 codes. Don't forget you can purchase a Windows 10 code to activate Windows 11. This is something where you can save a few pounds. But if you go and hit uh, Windows 10, hit buy it now. And then when it takes you to the basket, you can use OC3D as your promotional code and that will give you 25% off any of the Windows codes that I'll show you today. Once you've hit submit order, it will take you through to the payment options and you can pay by credit, debit card, PayPal, Mint or NeoSurf. And once you hit pay now, you'll uh, receive your code into your email inbox. If you head over to the uh, SCD key website, then you will be able to buy uh, discounted versions of the latest games and also software like Office as well, if you are interested. So yes, 4060 Ti. Now I have two. But like I said, one of the first things that I do want to say is about the price because it does come in less than the 3060 did when it came out last time. But it comes in at an aggressive price, but some of you are gonna jump straight on the fact about eight gigabyte, and some of you are gonna jump straight in at the fact that it's only got 128 bit memory bus and it seems to be like a recipe for disaster. But what they've effectively done is with the 3060, you had four megabyte of L2 cache. They've now upped that to 32, which means that the actual um, pipeline for the uh, VRAM going into the uh, system memory is now the traffic is so much less because of all that extra L2. You're not needing to use the bus so much, you're not needing to use the VRAM so much, and it just makes the whole process so much cleaner and more efficient, which is one of the reasons why they've been able to bring the power requirements down. But also by going down that route, L2 cache is cheaper than VRAM because technically at the end of the day, you uh, VRAM prices are just like mad. So they've been able to do it this way, like I said, to make things quicker, cleaner and more efficient, meaning that the requirements for that sort of stuff has been greatly reduced. Now they do say about it being like a very high frame rate 1080p card, but one of the things that I've seen in my results is I think you can bump that up to the 2560 kind of approach as well. And you don't necessarily always need to be running um, crazy, you know, adding on the DLSS and frame generation. But if I'm completely honest, if you've got the ability to be able to use it, then why the heck not? Um, build quality between the two. I mean, this is just a baby Founders Editions card. You don't need to really know much more than that. They are built like tanks because obviously where Nvidia do it themselves, their overheads are much smaller because they make the chip themselves. Whereas you can see that people like Gigabyte are really going to struggle when you've got an all plastic shroud, a plastic backplate, and it does feel that little bit more cheap. If both of them were in the store when I walked in at the same time, I would buy this one. Unless I was thinking about um, painting, modifying, or playing around, then the Gigabyte would be much easier to take apart, sand down, paint, make it your own, if that's the way you want to go about it. Obviously, you have to worry about warranty, but anyway. Now, uh, they come in at 399, that is the MSRP, and it's a great little budget card not necessarily budget like aggressive budget but compared to like a 4080 then it's much more aggressively priced and i think if you alter your expectations about resolution then i don't think you're really going to mind that much now like i have said we have retested everything on this brand new rig with a 13900k 
lots of Corsair bits in there. Thank you very much for helping me out with that, by the way, Corsair. But brand new test rig. We've also separated the graphs out into resolutions. So this graph is just 1080p and everything has been retested for this review. So there is an awful lot of data there. Now, yes, sure, you might be used to getting just a few results on some places uh, and five results to make your life easy, but we test everything so much that we like to be able to give you some stuff to chew and, uh, and think about. Now, we've gone back to the vertical graphs, but whether we move it around in the review or go back to vertical, but technically, if I have the graphs this way, then I can't get as many results in if they go right the way along so we've kind of like condensed it in and it i don't know it just seems to make more sense but we are up we are open to people trying to find better ways for us to be able to show you this on screen as long as we can show you all of our results because we do put so very much work in now like i said i can ping lots of results up for you each graph is a separate resolution so you've got one with 1080 you've got one with 2560 and we have done lots and lots of testing for you. You can go to the website and see many more results, all of the graphs, all of the games, for you to be able to pick apart and take a look at. But I actually think this is a cracking, cracking little card. I certainly didn't get to the point with my testing, even at 2560 by 1440, where I thought this was utterly running out of VRAM and it was going to annoy me if I'd spent that much money. We do obviously have another launch tomorrow, depending on when you watch the video, which we'll see whether it makes much difference with that. But for now, for 399, if you do want to uh, try and get on the DLSS3 bandwagon, then this is actually a little cracker. You just need to be able to um, change your opinion, or maybe not change your opinion, but keep an eye on your resolution. If you want it to run 4K and you want to spend $400 on a graphics card, then you may be asking a little bit too much for the grunt and for the performance that's going to be required if you want crazy high frame rates. But 2560 by 1440, even if you've got a 4K screen, just turning the game resolution down, but turning all of the bells and whistles on, it still looks incredibly pretty. And I actually use 2560 by 1440 on my desk. Now, I've got access to mental graphics cards that will comfortably play at 4K, but the, the mix between the two of actually doing stuff on my desktop, um, pictures, or I actually still really like um, 2560. Maybe I'm just old and stuck in my ways, but I think if you've got one of those screens or maybe a high refresh rate 1080p screen, this for $400 is actually a little bit of a bargain. Um, please let me know your thoughts underneath. Please don't forget that you can like, subscribe and comment. I have lots more coming for you. We've got another GPU launch. We've got a brand new website launch. Oops, did I let that out? Quick, let's turn the camera off.